What if I told you there's a place in the world Americans can safely travel to right now where there's no need for masks or social distancing? That place is the Maldives, more specifically it's the resorts Soneva Fushi and Soneva Johnny. In this video, I'll explain how they've been able to turn both properties into pandemic pods through their stringent COVID-19 safety procedures, where neither guests nor staff have to wear masks or social distance. We'll also cover what the journey was like from New York, the dining, the kids club, the beach villas, the overwater villas, the excursions, and much, much more. So keep watching. Many thanks to Suneva Fushi and Suneva Johnny for hosting us. Hey, welcome back to Top Flight Family. My name is Carmen Sanyovi, and I'm so excited to tell you about our amazing trip to the Maldives. In order to fly into the Maldives, you have to show negative results from a COVID-19 PCR test that was taken 72 hours from your departure. And then we also had to fill out an online health declaration form in order to get into the Maldives. Now, if you've been watching our channel for a while, you know that we really like to fly carry-on only. We almost never check luggage. But when it comes to flying certain international airlines like Emirates, they have pretty strict requirements when it comes to carry-ons. So for this trip, we actually did have to check luggage. And let me tell you, that check-in line, we waited there for over two hours. And that's because each transaction takes so much longer now because the attendant isn't just checking your luggage, they're checking your COVID-19 test results. They're making sure that you have that online health form filled out. So even being able to do this trip at all requires immense attention to detail. And unfortunately, there were a lot of people who were just not allowed to get on that flight. A lot of people took the wrong kind of COVID-19 test. You need the PCR test with the swab instead of the rapid test. And then also a lot of people took their PCR test too early, so it was outside of that 72 hour window. So there was definitely some drama at the check-in counters. So getting to the Maldives from New York is pretty rough. Um, I would say total travel time was about 24 hours. So our flight was about 12 hours long. It left JFK at 11 p.m. local time and then arrived in Dubai at around 8.30 p.m. local Dubai time. And then we had a six hour layover in the Dubai airport. So we went to the Marhaba Lounge, which you can access if you have a Priority Pass membership like we do. And I'm really amazed that we were able to spend six hours there. It really didn't feel like that long. So we departed Dubai at 2.30 a.m. Dubai time. The flight was about four hours long, so we arrived in Mali around 8 a.m. local time. So once we got to the Mali airport, a representative from Soneva Resorts met us, took our luggage, and they took care of checking it in for the seaplane. We took a Tesla to drive to the other side of the airport where the seaplanes are. And then we spent a little bit of time in the Soneva lounge while we waited for the seaplane to get ready. And then we boarded the seaplane. So Soneva does have their own seaplanes and you're actually gonna see them later in this video. But depending on the availability, guests who arrive at Male will be booked either on the Soneva seaplane or they will be chartered on one of these Trans-Maldivian Airways planes. So a couple of tips for the seaplane ride, they will give you earplugs and I definitely recommend that you use them because it does get pretty noisy from the propellers. And make sure you get a window seat because the views are absolutely amazing and you don't wanna miss out on that. So the seaplane landed next to this basically floating wooden platform in the middle of the ocean. And then from there, we got onto a boat that would take us to the resort. And one thing about the Suneva Resorts is that they really pioneered this concept of barefoot luxury. And their motto is no news, no shoes. And that's actually a saying that's been kind of adopted across the Maldives. And so when you get onto the boat, they literally take your shoes. <laughs> and then for the rest of the time you're at the resort, basically nobody wears shoes. So we enjoyed some fresh watermelon juice on the ride over. And then we got to the pier at Suneva Fushi. And then we took a golf cart to the first of three villas that we would be staying in during this trip. So this first villa was Villa 31, and it's the two-bedroom Crusoe with a pool. <laughs> wow, look at this. Oh, it's so big! Whoa, so look at cool. this. Wow, we got our own little pool. So cool. <laughs> oh my god, it's like a tree house. Wow. So this villa has a bedroom downstairs, a bedroom upstairs, a beautiful outdoor soaking tub. It's got several different decks. It has a living room and a work area, a private pool, and it has direct access to the beach. Now we actually have another video where we take you through a very detailed tour of the entire villa. So if you wanna check that out, I'm gonna link that down below. 
So once we got settled into the villa, we had our second PCR tests done. So as I mentioned, we had to already show negative PCR tests to get into the Maldives. However, once you get into the Soneva resorts, their staff will do their own PCR test. They swab both the nose and the throat. So then you have to actually self-isolate in the villa for up to 24 hours until you get the results back. Now during that time, they'll also wash and sanitize all of the clothes you wore while you were traveling. And that's done completely complimentary. Now you'll notice that the team that came to greet us at the pier were all wearing full protective gear. They had masks, they had face shields. And after they get the guests settled into their villas, those hosts who came to greet us will follow the same procedures as us. In other words, they will also get a PCR test and they will also self-isolate for 24 hours until they get those results. So when I posted about these safety protocols on TikTok, there were four questions that came up over and over again, so I'm gonna answer them here. Number one, what if you test positive? So if upon arriving to either Soneva Resort you test positive, you'll actually self-isolate or quarantine in that villa for 14 days. Your accommodations will be completely free, but you will have to cover your own food and drink. Number two, aren't you putting the locals at risk? No, because there are no locals on these islands. Both Soneva Fushi and Soneva Johnny are private island resorts, and so every single person that lives on the island either is a guest of the resort or they work for the resort, so everybody follows the exact same protocols. Number three, what about false negatives? So as I mentioned, all guests have to take a PCR test within 72 hours of the time they depart from Male. When they get to Soneva, they take another PCR test, and then the day before you depart, you take yet another PCR test. And all of the hosts or staff at the resort are tested every five days. So yeah, false negatives are certainly within the realm of possibility, but with all of these layers of testing, any positive cases are gonna be caught pretty quickly and contact tracing can be done effectively. Number four, what if you get sick while you're there? So there's a neighboring island to Suneva Fushi that has a brand new ICU unit with 20 beds, and it's just a 10 minute ride by speedboat. Okay, so those first 24 hours were really such a blur. We were so exhausted from the journey, we were jet lagged, and in a way I'm actually glad that we had to self-isolate because it kind of took the pressure off from feeling like we had to go out and do things. So because of jet lag, I woke up super early the next day and I was actually able to watch the sunrise from the beach. And as it turns out, the rest of this trip I actually ended up doing the same thing every morning. It was kind of my special time to just enjoy a cup of coffee while I watch the sunrise. So later that morning, we got a text from the hosts saying that our PCR test came back negative, and so we were free to explore the island, and so off we went to get breakfast. By the way, if you're new to our channel, we're the Sanyovi family, and we're all about inspiring families to travel the world in comfort and style. We share tips on how families can save time, reduce hassle, and maximize comfort when traveling with kids. So if that sounds good to you, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next video. Also, we started homeschooling our girls this year, so if you wanna learn more about how we combine homeschool and travel, check out our home homeschooling channel at homeschool wherever. Okay, so we are walking to breakfast now. So we got some good news this morning, which is that we all tested negative. So then the weird thing is um, none of us have to wear masks the whole time we're here, which is gonna take some getting used to. Now the resort did provide us with bikes, but we ended up actually walking to breakfast instead. Um, there were some issues with sizing of the bikes and also there's a whole other thing that I will get into about the bikes later in this video. But one thing that's good to know is Soneva Fushi is a pretty walkable island and it's also really beautiful. So we definitely enjoyed the walk to breakfast. So the buffet the restaurant at Soneva Johnny is called Mihiri Mita and it's all outdoors, but because of how they've planted the trees so strategically, the entire dining area is shaded, so it's actually really comfortable even on a hot day. They serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner buffets here. Now, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that we love a good breakfast buffet at a hotel. And unfortunately, breakfast buffets have become a bit of a casualty because of COVID. Some hotels are still offering buffets, but the food tends to be behind plexiglass barriers and you usually have the staff serving it instead. So it was really refreshing refreshing to see that this was a real breakfast buffet, like old school pre-pandemic times where you served your own food. And this breakfast is pretty legendary in the travel industry. In addition to the main food area that's outdoors, there's actually individual rooms for all different types of food. And each room is perfectly temperature controlled to suit its contents. So you have So Delicate, which is a room full of gourmet hams, cold cuts, cheeses, and preserves. You have So Guilty, which is all kinds of chocolate. There's So Cool, which has 60 rotating flavors of homemade ice cream and sorbets. And during breakfast hours, this is also where you're gonna find fruit and cereal. Now my absolute favorite part of the breakfast buffet was all of the South Asian food. The Maldives is situated very close to Sri Lanka, so a lot of the cuisine kind of reflects that heritage. And every day at breakfast, there was a fantastic chicken curry and a fantastic fish curry, and I made sure to fill up on that 
every single day at breakfast. So at breakfast, we also met Sai, who was our butler for the entirety of the stay, and she was really, really awesome. So at both Soneva Fushi and at Soneva Johnny, every guest is assigned what they call either a barefoot butler or a girl or guy Friday. And essentially, this is your point person for every single thing related to your stay. Everything from getting restaurant reservations, to getting a ride from one place to another, to even getting a copy of your hotel bill, this one person basically takes care of all of that for you. Now, I knew that Sai was taking care of guests other than us as well, but you would almost never know because she was so unflappable. Anything that was thrown at her, she handled with such grace and ease. And that's not to say that we were throwing things at her. We were actually pretty low maintenance, but there were a lot of things on the itinerary that the resort had put together for us that had to be like moved or rescheduled or canceled due to weather conditions. And she just handled everything with so much ease. We loved it. So after breakfast, we dropped the girls off at the kids club. And so Neva Fushi has a really fantastic kids club called The Den. And it's a technology free zone because they're really hoping for kids to unplug and just have fun in this space. When you get there, there's actually a really cute door within the door. So kids can decide whether they go through the little door or the big door. There's a family pool with a slide. There's a splash pad for toddlers. There's a huge arts and crafts area. There's a music room with a drum set and keyboards. There's a whole dress up area with wigs and costumes and finger puppets. And if your kids love Legos, they will love the Lego room. It has both big kids Legos and also Duplo bricks for the younger kids. The Den also screens kids movie nights a couple of nights a week. And when it's not movie night, this room is used as a quiet room for reading. So the Den has a full daily schedule of activities. And on that first day that we were there, the girls were so excited because they got to do this fun tubing activity out on the water. So the kids got to sit on this big inflatable sofa pulled by a speedboat and the girls loved it. So unfortunately I wasn't there to capture any of that. However, the girls raved about it. They absolutely loved the experience. So while the girls were at the kids club, Serge and I went to check out Out of the Blue, which is one of the newest restaurants at Soneva Fushi. It serves Vietnamese, Japanese, and Indonesian cuisine and is located in an overwater building with stunning views of the ocean. Even if you don't come to eat, it's a great place to come and just lounge and enjoy the views. There's plenty of sofas where you can relax and they also have these fantastic overwater nets. Now, right next door to the restaurant is the only public water slide into the ocean at the resort. So if you're not lucky enough to be staying in one of the overwater villas, but you still want to experience the slide, this is where you can go to experience it. Later that afternoon, back in the villa, I enjoyed a bath in that lovely outdoor tub, while Serge and Sean went for a swim in the ocean and checked out some of the fish and coral. That night we had dinner at Fresh in the Garden, which is a Mediterranean restaurant that's heavily organic and plant-based. And it's actually situated above the resort's own organic vegetable garden. This is what it looks like during the day, so you can see it a little more clearly. But it's a really lovely space and the food was really good. The next morning, we were still jet lagged, so me and the girls actually woke up before dawn and hung out outside the villa. And some bunnies came to say hi. So Suneva Fushi has tons of bunnies that live on the island, and they are very, very friendly. They're very open to you feeding them. If you try to pet them, they don't really like that very much. But this was one of our girls' favorite things about this resort. The bunnies will often come out at breakfast time, and on this particular day at breakfast, a lot of them came to hang out with us. Okay, so let's talk about bikes. Now, chances are you've seen on Instagram or other social media video of guests at resorts in the Maldives kind of cycling around without a care in the world. And let me tell you, that was not our family. Our family is a bit bicycly challenged, shall we say. So the fact that bicycles are the primary form of transport around the resorts was definitely a little bit challenging for us. So Serge is fine. He's a really good bike rider. I did learn how to ride a bike as a kid, but I only actually owned a bike about two years of my childhood. So for the last like 40 something years, I've hardly had any time to ride a bike. Sean has learned how to ride a two-wheeler, but she just hasn't had much practice. And then Ella has never actually learned to ride without training wheels. So the bicycle thing can be a little bit challenging for families, especially if you've got younger kids and or kids who are not that proficient at riding bikes yet. So a couple of alternatives to know about. One is you can request a tricycle. So it'll be, you know, one wheel in the front, two wheels in the back, so it's a lot more stable and easy to ride. 
and some of the tricycles will have a box in the back that's cushioned where a small child can sit pretty comfortably. However, there is no type of seat belt or harness, so if you have a rambunctious toddler who's likely to climb out of that box, this is not the best solution. And the resort does also have smaller bikes with training wheels. So at Soneva Fushi, I think the bike thing is not such an issue, but at Soneva Johnny, it can be pretty dicey because so much of that resort is made up of these winding jetties. And just one moment of carelessness and you could be in the ocean. Now, luckily the ocean water is not deep at all, so you're not in any real danger. So if you're traveling with kids, I would actually recommend mostly getting around by golf cart. This is one of the things that your barefoot butler is there to help you with, transportation. So don't be shy about requesting rides from one place to another. Both resorts are very family friendly. They know this is something that makes life so much easier for family travelers. So really golf carts are the best way to get around. So after breakfast, it was time to get ready for our snorkeling trip. So first we went to get fitted for our gear at the dive center at the resort. And all of this gear rental is actually complimentary for guests. Then we met our snorkeling guide, got our life jackets, and we headed to the boat. So they took us to an area that's known to have a lot of sea turtles, and it was really fun to be able to see the sea turtles in their natural habitat. After snorkeling, Sai met up with us and drove us to our next villa, which was one of the brand new over water villas that had been completed just a couple months before our trip. Oh my gosh, look at this. Oh my god, look! God, this is huge. This villa has two bedrooms, each one with incredible views of the ocean, a big living room, a dining room, several big walk-in closets, and a deck that stretches the entire length of the villa with a private infinity pool and your very own water slide into the ocean. Now, if you want a detailed tour of this villa, we actually have a video that walks you through the entire thing, so I'm gonna link that below if you wanna check it out. We ordered lunch from In Villa Dining and it was an amazing spread. And we spent the afternoon having fun with the pool, the water slide, and doing some snorkeling in the ocean right outside the villa. That night we tried the dinner buffet at Mihiri Mita, which was fantastic. It was really cool to see how they transformed the space with these lanterns all over the ground. If you're a fan of South Asian food, you're definitely gonna love this buffet. Now the next day was pretty windy and we had left a couple of the floaties out on the deck and unfortunately we watched as the wind whipped them into the ocean. And I felt so bad because Soneva Johnny and Soneva Fushi are both extremely eco-conscious resorts. Absolutely no plastic is used. And they actually ask guests that if you bring any plastic onto the island that becomes trash, to actually bring it back home with you and dispose of it there. So I felt so bad that we had contributed to adding yet more plastic to the ocean since these floaties were blown out into the water. And then next thing you know, this happened. The host who's in charge of maintaining the pools at all of the overwater villas, I guess must have seen these floaties get into the water and he basically dove in and went to swim after them and to get them. And this was such a mission because every time they were almost within his grasp, a wave would whip them a little bit further, just a couple inches away. And this took like a good 20 minutes. Anyway, we were so impressed with his dedication that we had to take a picture with him. So. Here he is, amazing job. Thank you so much for helping save our floaty and save the oceans from yet more plastic. So later that night, we had dinner at Out of the Blue, that same overwater restaurant. We had gone for lunch, which was lovely, but it was really, really stunning at dinner. Well, would you say, give me that. Thank you. The skinnier one is salt, and the darker, bigger one is pepper. Aww. Cuties. 
Then the next day we got ready to transfer to Sone Vajani, the sister resort. But before we did that, we actually stopped by the jewelry shop, which was really beautiful. The girls had fun trying on different pieces. And we also stopped by the glass workshop. Now, the Suneva resorts have a very extensive recycling program, and any single-use glass that's brought in is actually crushed and melted in their state-of-the-art glass furnace. So anything made of glass that you use at the resort is actually created in this workshop. And you can even take glass making classes here. So we transferred to Suneva Johnny that afternoon, and we were actually originally supposed to go in the morning, but the flight kept getting pushed back because of weather conditions. So we took a speedboat over to the seaplane, and it's really cute because that little wooden platform where you board the seaplane, there's a sign on it that will actually say Suneva Fushi or Suneva Johnny International Airport. Now the Suneva Johnny plane is much, much more comfortable than the charter plane. The seats are a lot wider, it's much cushier, so definitely a much more pleasant ride. So we arrived at Suneva Johnny and met our new barefoot butler, Lena. And before taking us to our villa, she took us on a tour of the island so that we could get more familiar with it. We saw the organic gardens that supply the restaurants on the resort. We saw the eco center where they do all kinds of recycling work. We got to see the mangrove trees and the mangrove crabs that are really the bedrock of the entire ecological system on the island. And we got to see Cinema Paradiso, which is the gorgeous outdoor movie theater. Then we pulled up to our overwater villa and I had no idea that the property booked us in the largest overwater villa in the whole resort. Bro, look at oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? Oh my god. Damn. Oh, wow. You like it? Hey, don't do that. What yes. do you think? I love it. On the ground floor, there's a spacious living dining area, as well as a full kitchen. On the second floor, there's a private gym, a pool table, and a massive couch where you can cuddle up to watch movies. All four bedrooms have incredible views of the turquoise blue waters, and stretching the entire length of the villa is a deck with a water slide and a private infinity pool. Now again, if you want an in-depth tour of this villa, and it's definitely worth watching, we have a video where we walk you through it, and I'm gonna link that down below. So we spent the rest of that afternoon at the pool and watched the sunset there, and then we went to dinner at Overseas, which is the pescatarian, vegetarian, and plant-based restaurant by Swedish chef Matthias Dahlgren. <laughs> so the next morning we had breakfast at the buffet restaurant Down to Earth, and this is such a gorgeous, gorgeous space. It's got kind of a circular shape, so anywhere you look, you get beautiful views of the ocean. There are individual rooms for bread, individual rooms for salads. And one thing that was really nice was at breakfast, we met a couple of families and the girls got to play with their two little kids. And it was the first time in almost an entire year that they actually got to socialize with kids indoors without a mask on. And then after breakfast, we got our third COVID test because in order to exit Mala, you have to show negative results. And we went to check out this famous swing in the middle of the ocean that you have undoubtedly seen on Instagram before. Then we had lunch at Crab Shack, and Crab Shack is probably one of the most popular restaurants here at Sone Vajani. They specialize in, of course, crabs, and they serve both blue crab and mud crab, and there's a lot of different sauces and preparations to choose from. We really love the black pepper sauce and the Provencal sauce, so, so those are two that I would definitely recommend. The cocktails here are really fun too, especially this one called Message in a Bottle, which is made of basil, lemon, and vodka, and the basil is of course grown in their own organic garden. After lunch, the girls went to the kids club while Serge and I had a couple's massage. And there are actually two spas at Johnny, the main spa in the main building, and then there's also a smaller Ayurvedic spa near the Crab Shack. So the main spa is very simple and pretty small, but the quality of treatments is really out of this world, so definitely don't miss this experience. The gym here also has great views of the ocean. Now the kids club at Sune Vajani is really simple and really small, but the staff members were so fantastic. They were really personable, really fun, and our girls had a great time and they were actually in no rush to leave. But one thing that's good to know is Sone Vajani is actually in the process of building a new kids club. And once it's completed, it's actually gonna be the largest kids club in all of Southeast Asia. So that's gonna be ready in about another year or two. So definitely keep an eye out for that one. Don't worry, nothing's gonna happen. As soon as it hits like shallow water or an island, it's just gonna disappear. 
So then as we were walking out, we noticed that a lot of the hosts were standing around looking over the water. And we were like, huh, I wonder what's going on. And it turns out that there was a water spout in the background. And this is essentially like a baby tornado, but it's over water instead of land. So that was really cool to see. That afternoon, we went on a dolphin safari. And you know, anytime you do like dolphin or whale watching tours, it's always a bit hit or miss because you never know what you're gonna be able to see. Unfortunately, on this day, we didn't have that much luck. We only saw a brief glimpse of one dolphin and then it started raining, but it was still fun to be out there on the water. So that night we had dinner at So Wild, which is the plant-based restaurant by raw food chef Diana Von Kranich and it's located in the middle of the organic garden. Now, unfortunately, as I mentioned, it was raining that evening, so they actually rearranged the seating so that we were right next to the kitchen, but usually there's a much nicer setup where you get to sit actually in the middle of the garden itself. But it was still a really pleasant meal. We had a tasting menu where we went through a series of dishes that were all plant-based, even the dessert. So this was definitely not our usual kind of thing, but it was very well done. And then sadly, next day was time to head back home. Okay, if you want a detailed tour of that $10 million four bedroom overwater villa in Soneva Johnny, just click that video right there. If you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Give us a follow on both TikTok and Instagram. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.